Howdy y'all. I've thrown a lot of frisbees in my day, whether just at a park, playing ultimate, or hitting a disc golf course itself. The golfing version of frisbee I have only really played three times. Once on a mountain in Colorado, another in an open field in Richmond, Virginia, and finally in a forest in southern New Jersey. I'm not a pro, but I can toss a good tomahawk and backhand if I need to. Let's not talk about the forehand though. Today we are taking an in-depth look at the three best disc golf games available for VR. Off the Chains Disc Golf and Disc Ninja ringing in at $15 USD and Disc Golf Valley for $20 USD. With the former being available across both Steam and Quest stores while the latter is Steam exclusive. All three are relatively rough around the edges and leave much to be desired when it comes to finish polish. As always, if you're here just for my final thoughts on where to put your money, hop to the end. But otherwise, let's dive into the details. You would think that disc golf games would all feel relatively the same, right? But as it turns out, there are some massive differences between these three and how you throw, how the disc flies, and how the disc interacts with its surroundings. Disc Ninja and Disc Golf Valley have focused exclusively on making the Frisbee a Frisbee, regardless of whether you put your whole weight into the throw or use perfect form. The disc is going to attempt to fly based on the speed and angle of the release point. Disc Ninja's throw is much more arcade-like, which generally makes sense for the style of game it is. There is an option for an in-round aim assist that you can calibrate such that your disc will fly in that general direction, if desired. The game handles the speed and direction of the release quite well, but it seems to autocorrect its angle much more than you would expect a real frisbee to. If you were to play disc golf exclusively with a putter, this is exactly how I would imagine it to feel. It feels rubbery and bouncy in its toss, and it isn't much different when hitting the ground or walls. If it hits the edge of the disc perfectly, then there is significant bounce, which I would expect. However, once the disc is hitting parallel with the ground, it stops almost too fast. There's not an opening for much sliding once that occurs. Disc Golf Valley really nails its frisbee physics, because if I do great form, pull it across my chest and release at the right angle, it is going to be a great throw. But even if I just go for a half-hearted flick shot using my wrist and a small amount of body rotation, it will still fly exactly as I would expect it to. Not as great of a shot, but an accurate representation of what I would expect from a frisbee. Not only that, but it displays your throw form graphically to help you adjust your drag or release point as you play through the courses. Unlike the other two games, the disc has significant movement when hitting the ground. It can flip over itself, roll a distance, or spin around in a circle. Sometimes it seems a bit too generous in its movements when hitting the ground, but I think it is better than the alternative that the others use. Off the Chains instead has focused exclusively on proper disc throwing form. If you don't follow the proper form of pulling across the chest and releasing, your disc is not going anywhere. When done correctly, this game makes the flight path and the weight of the frisbee feel the most realistic. However, if you mess up by even a reasonable margin, then the disc starts to not feel like a disc. For instance, when you just flick the shot with your wrist, the shot path is going to die right in front of you. This can make it feel like more of a proper form sim than a disc sim. Interaction with the ground is also minimal, as there really is no rolling on the edges and bouncing parallel to the ground is just unheard of. That, again, takes you out of the realistic expectation of how a frisbee should interact with the ground. Disc Ninja and Off the Chain start you off with an app tutorial, while Disc Off Valley completely skips that option and sends you right into the gameplay. They display some button bindings when you enter your first course, but if I wasn't a seasoned VR veteran, I would have been very confused. Off the Chain's tutorial is slow, and the robot teaching you how to play really grinds my gears a bit, but it does effectively teach you what you need to know to at least start out with the game. Now, gamification is where Disc Ninja really kills it, so I need to spend some time doting on it here. One, the tutorial is great. Once you are done with it, everything will make sense and you will feel ready to tackle the game. But this isn't a game like Off the Chains and Disc Off Valley where you go through a typical disc golf course outside in the elements trying to beat the par for each hole. Instead, each quote unquote course is one long level where the ending quote unquote basket is a golden dragon statue that comes alive when you hit it. It's really actually pretty cool. There is a three star system where you get ranked based on throwing the disc the least amount of times you can through the level. Along each level, there are little hidden treasures that allow you to upgrade your wardrobe. The environments themselves are gorgeous, and the smoke bomb menu option is a novel and fascinating UI element. I love the world that encapsulates this game, and I love the novel take on a disc golf game. There's a lot of creativity here, however, when playing through the physics and random glitches annoyed me too much to be covered completely by the pretty package that it came in. The throw being slightly arcade-like might be fine if bouncing off the walls was more realistic. 
and accidentally glitching through textures was minimized. I had at least three times in the five levels I played through where it glitched through an existing texture or off of a non-existent one. Additionally, the world has tons of spots on walls and just beyond the paths that essentially count as out of bounds but there's no obvious definition for these out of bounds areas. The walls have tons of places for the disc to land and so you can't reliably bounce off of them to inbounds many times. This hurts your score more than I really think it should. Off the Chains takes on a typical disc golf course and a darker, more realistic approach to scenery. And thus the textures seem a little higher quality than the ones that are brighter and more sparse in Disc Golf Valley. However, they do feel more drab at times. You begin the game with a putter and a mid-range frisbee, and then you are able to rack up points based on your play that'll eventually allow you to buy a driver, along with other versions of those three basic options. The store system itself is very good, but I do wish that they had started you out with all three, as the mid-range was difficult to go very far when I was first starting out. The driver would have made it a bit easier. As you beat each course a new one will unlock as available to play, there is no rating or completion threshold to continue to unlock new courses. Disc Golf Valley, in some ways, combines the unlock system of both of the others. You begin with one course available and there's a three star rating system depending on how good you do against par. More courses unlock based on the number of stars that you have in total. So just because you've completed a course doesn't mean you necessarily get a new one. Along the way, you can also unlock Frisbees as you continue to progress with your star collection. This gives some benefits to going back and playing old courses with the better Frisbees. Valley by far has the lowest number of setting options between the three. Off the Chains and Disc Golf Valley leave much to be desired in the UI versus Disc Ninja's smoke bomb technology. No matter which game you have, there is ample single player content in the form of courses and replayability. At the time of this recording, Disc Golf Valley has no multiplayer available, and so we will only be able to discuss Disc Ninja and Off the Chains. Neither have a thriving player base, as I was able to find one person on Off the Chains and no one on Disc Ninja when I was randomly matchmaking. Off the Chains relies on a lobby plus quick match setup, similar to how Golf Plus and Eleven do their matchmaking, which is good for games with lower player bases in my opinion. It helps it not just be a crapshoot for quick match. Once inside of a room, the game can start, and it goes as you would expect. You take turns tossing the disc until you both finish the hole, and then repeat that to the end. It is a slow and methodical romp through the courses, and does remind me very much of playing at an actual course. Disc Ninja lets you take on course one at a time simultaneously with your mates. At the end of the day, your score is the only thing that matters, but it does make the matches move much quicker than a typical disc golf game just because you're able to go in tandem. It would be an excellent rotation game between multiple games with your friends on a Friday night. They both have a voice chat and avatar system that you can interact with, so there's nothing notable or lacking between the two games. As I said at the beginning, all three of these games need some serious polish before I would consider them really full games to the effect of other casual sport titans that already exist in VR. Without a doubt, Disc Golf Valley is the most realistic Disc Golf game mechanics wise, but it has a few barriers to entry with a lack of multiplayer and being PC VR exclusive. It also costs the most by a $5 margin. If you are a single player type gamer and want the most realistic game, then this is the one for you. There's no questions about that. However, if you're looking for a multiplayer game and or looking for a standalone version, then we have Off the Chains and Disc Ninja to consider. Disc Ninja is an arcade-like physics system and unique in its approach to the genre. If you don't care about replicating the world to your headset, you can have some great fun here and it would be an easy pickup for those less VR savvy folks in your friend group that still want to join you for multiplayer. The only reason why I would suggest Off the Chains over Disc Ninja would be exclusively if you're looking for a quote unquote realistic replication of the game and didn't have PC VR. A final note I should add here is that Disc Ninja is the only game that has received an update in the past year. Off the Chains last saw a small update in December of 2021 and Disc Golf Valley hasn't seen one since launch, despite its quote unquote early access label. There is a hole here in the VR space for a completed polished Disc Golf game. And I hope one day that one of these effectively fills it. If you found the video entertaining or helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'll see y'all later. Peace. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate your time and viewership. If you would like to join the community, I host monthly VR tournaments and community nights in my Discord. I would love for you to stop by, say hi, and get involved. On top of that, we are always talking about new news and events in social and casual sport VR. I look forward to seeing you around.